great. So interesting to know that you have um, hard copy and online brochures, and I think that can be a great mix, especially when you are at trade shows and stuff like that alike. Um, so we're just still waiting for Alex to come back in. Um, so just one moment, um, and we'll just keep those questions coming. And that's also an interesting comment from Bonnie. So we have reduced the size, though, as more people move online, but we still have a large amount of people ordering direct from hard copy brochures, um, which is very interesting. Um, and also at expos, um, that's also um, very important. Quite an interesting mix there in uh, marketing tools that are used. Uh, and it's great to see the diverse range that uh, is being undertaken. Particularly where the strength in marketing is around integrating each of those tools. So it's, not, it's about ensuring that each of those tools work in synergy with each other. And this is where it's particularly important that uh, you remember that you're not just targeting your end clients, but also the other stakeholders that you do interact with. So as I mentioned, the members, the intermediaries, your suppliers, your volunteers, and uh, the funding partners that you work with as well ensure that uh, you are able to appeal to each of those multiple target markets. The other aspect to remember with uh, looking at your target markets is the buying process. So what is the length of time actually uh, that, that's required before someone actually makes a decision to utilise your products and services? It's important to remember, and this particularly works uh, true when you're looking at grant applications and working with funding partners, is that the person who's actually utilising a product or service may not actually be the one that's actually purchasing it or making the decision to actually make that purchase. So it's around uh, understanding the roles that everyone undertakes within that buying process. So how the users the people that are actually utilising that product or service, whether there's uh, people that are influencing that decision, the people that are actually deciding on the purchase, and those that are actually making that decision as well. This works particularly true in retail, and you look at, uh, in supermarkets, the number of products that are clearly targeting kids as uh, the user of the product, and. Uh, the candies and lollies at uh, the exit counters of supermarkets is a prime example of this. They're obviously targeting children in the consumption of those products, but it's ultimately the parent that is making the decision to make that purchase. And this is where that decision-making process, it's a matter of not just uh, targeting those that are utilising the product, but also influencing those that are actually making that decision and the ones that are actually providing the financial transaction. Similarly, it works true in government where you're looking at interfacing with those that are actually making the decision in granting uh, funding and where it's actually going towards uh, service delivery aspects. So where it may actually be assisting people who uh, may be receiving the benefits of the services that you provide. Every organisation has competitors and while you may not have direct competitors in terms of the services that you are providing, if you're receiving any sort of funding or sponsorship or you're working in with uh, philanthropic trusts who are providing you with funding, the reality is you're actually competing against organisations for that income. So it's looking at uh, who your direct competitors are, so those that are actually offering the same or similar products and services to you and those that are serving similar market segments to your indirect competitors, those that may be offering different products but are fulfilling the same need. Classic example is looking at, uh, say, restaurants. And if you look at uh, high-end restaurants, obviously uh, direct competitors or other high-end restaurants. But also when you look at uh, indirect competitors, might be other uh, high-end entertainment venues as well. So comparing, say, a dinner through to a night out at the theatre. 
And then uh, the other products and services that fulfil a related need. So obviously in the example that we've used, the broader need is one around entertainment. So how does going out for dinner or seeing a musical theatre show compared to say watching a movie at home and sitting on the couch and having uh, uh, watching an entertaining uh, DVD or video? It's around understanding that broader competitive context. So it's not just about looking at uh, your direct competitors, but who those broader competitors are as well. And that's particularly important when you're looking at uh, funding applications. Bearing in mind that uh, funding applications obviously work in looking at priority areas from either government or philanthropic trusts or business partners and identifying on how you identify those needs and achieve those needs that they see as their priority areas. You also want to be able to look at the broader environment. The marketing terminology here is known as a pestle analysis. And basically that looks at your broader political context. So, uh, and this is particularly true in the not-for-profit context currently. What is the impact of uh, political changes? What does it mean for your organisation? Economic impacts, not just around uh, hard economic data and uh, Australia going through the current economic recovery, but what does it actually mean for your potential customers and service delivery? Social attitudes, how do so so changing social needs impact on your organisation and its ability to deliver its products or services? What's the impact of technological changes, not just around uh, the organisational capacity and internal technology changes, but what does that mean in terms of that broader service delivery? Through to the environmental elements. How does uh, the changing environmental contact, uh, context, changing regulatory frameworks, changing legal frameworks, how does that impact your ability to achieve those marketing outcomes? And it's looking at uh, the broader regulatory changes as well. As an example, there's been uh, changes around the Associations Act and uh, the Incorporations Act, looking at uh, the responsibilities of committees of management. How do those broadening responsibilities, which by their very nature bring uh, not-for-profit organisations in line 